ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഇന്ന് ഞാനൊരു പുതിയ മെഡിക്കൽ പരമായ ഒരു വീഡിയോ ആയിട്ടാണ് ഇന്ന് ഞാൻ നിങ്ങളുടെ മുന്നിൽ എത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ബീറ്റ കീറ്റോൺ ആൻഡ് ഗ്ലൂക്കോസ് എങ്ങനെ അത് നമുക്ക് ഗ്ലൂക്കോ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വൺ ടച്ച് ഗ്ലൂക്കോമീറ്ററിൻ്റെ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വെച്ച് ഇതെല്ലാം നമുക്ക് ചെയ്യാമെന്നും അതെങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് ഹാൻഡിൽ ആ മിഷൻ നല്ല ഗുഡ് റിസൾട്ട് കിട്ടാൻ മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്ത് നമുക്ക് കീപ്പ് ചെയ്യാമെന്നുള്ളൊരു ചെറിയ വീഡിയോയുടെ ഒരു ട്രെയിനിങ്ങിൻ്റെ എക്സ്പ്ലോർ ചെയ്തതാണ് ഞാൻ ഈ വീഡിയോ ഒന്നും എടുക്കുന്നത് എല്ലാവരും ഈ വീഡിയോ വാച്ച് ചെയ്യണം ഇത് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് നല്ലൊരു ഉപകാരം As you notice, uh, all of you know the glucose strips are blue. This one is green for ketone. Okay? Painted with this glucometer over the past few years. Right? If you notice, in all of the glucometers that are distributed here in Kuwait, there is two insignias. One that is blue, one that is green. This means that all of the glucometers, all of the glucometers can, do, can conduct glucose and ketone tests. Right? The blue signifies uh, glucose and the green signifies ketone. This is uh, some color coding just for ease of use, just so you can remember it. Okay? Add uh, this to content, switch again. Okay. Switch one more time. All of this is very basic introduction. Okay. What is a glucometer? Or what's a uh, specifically a Sastre Express glucometer? There are monitoring systems. They are portable, they're handheld analyzers. Uh, soon, inshallah, in the future, you're going to see that we have uh, a much larger than the express one that's connected to the servers, but this is for the future. Maybe we can uh, conduct it some other time. Uh, there are separate testing for glucose and ketone, and uh, it incorporates multi patented, multi well technology, which is different from all other glucometers. The reason why Al Mwasa. Uh, got us as the company for glucometers and ketone is because our technology is the only technology, it's the patented technology, whereas uh, it erases or it removes or it bypasses all interferences, or at least most interferences. Okay? Uh, blood glucose measurements are unaffected by the patient's oxygen status and other interfering substances such as acetaminophen. When, when we inject a patient with acetaminophen, or if we spike a solution with acetaminophen, or ascorbic acid, or maltose, or galactose, all of this is going to have an effect on the outcome, the glucose outcome, uh, on all glucometers except for Express, Sastra. Uh, also, lastly, no calibration codes required. Obviously, you're all going to want. Okay. As you can see here, there are two strips. I don't want to point directly, but yeah. Two strips, one is blue, one is green. The blue, as you can read here, has the word glucose on the strip itself as well, and ketone is written on the green strip, okay? Um, the glucose results are reported in six seconds. So when you insert the strip inside the meter and you insert the droplet of blood, six seconds, you're going to wait for six seconds until the result comes out. As for the ketone, you're going to wait for 10 seconds. So it is not as instantaneous, but if we do a comparison between the ketone and the urine dipstick, it's still much faster, it's only 10 seconds. Okay, uh, the sample volume, not very important for you guys. Uh, for glucose, it is 1.2 microliters. For ketone, it's 0.6 microliters. That means that the blood sample of the patient coming out of his finger required to fill up the strip itself with glucose is 1.2 microliters, and with ketone, it is much less, it is half the quantity. 0.6. So when you're having patients that are struggling to uh, release a tiny droplet of blood, it's going to be much easier to fill the ketone than the glucose. Okay? Uh, this one is important. The reportable ranges for the strips. So beyond which result is it going to not show the result, and beneath which range is it not going to show the result. For glucose, let's only look at the millimole, let's not look at the milligram. For glucose, it is anything less than 0.6, it's not going to be able to show it. And anything less than 33.3, of course, millimoles per, per liter, it's not going to be able to show it. Or if we're going to see this forward, it's going to show a different result. It's going to show something different. As for the ketones, it's going to be 0 0.1 millimoles per liter and 7.0 millimoles per liter. Thank you. You guys know this very well. This is a test strip. This is the LCD display. The big number is the result. There are left and right arrow buttons, and there's a mode button, or essentially just a utility button. Right? 
Nice again, this is just for battery. Okay, uh, as a small refresher, this is, uh, like I said, the opportunity that I want to take to refresh the nursing department on how to use the uh, glucometer, whether it's glucose or ketone. Let's talk about the glucose first. The glucose or the blue strips, all right? There are two vials per box. So this is what the box looks like. I'm pretty sure you are very well known that there are two vials of strip in each box, okay? And there are 50 test strips per vial. So inside each box, there are two vials, and each singular vial of glucose has 50 strips, okay? Uh, actually, wait, wait. Uh, once opened, the test strips uh, are stable at room temperature for up to six months or 180 days, or until the expiration date of the strip itself. So, I just want to mention something. You all know very well that the expiration date is written on there, but some of you may or may not have known that there is also a, a, a small empty space at the bottom in order to write down the opening date and the discard date of the strip itself. Can you please pass this around? If you look right beneath it, you're going to see uh, help with the um, quality assurance as well. If the discard date no, is mean. further than the expiration date, we write down the expiration date on the discard date, even if it's less than 180 days, okay? Uh, keep the vials tightly closed when not in use. Excellent. Uh, store the uh, test strips in their original vial at room temperature. Do not mix between the glucose and ketone strips. Do not put them in each other's vials. The manufacturer's expiration date is printed on the vial of test strips, as you guys are seeing. And uh, always write the date opened and discard date on the vial. Notice that it's written in red, because it is very important. And from what I've seen, uh, you guys are doing it excellently and you're upholding these standards. Now, the ketone strips. The, the ketone strips are the green strips, okay? Each vial contains two, uh, uh, each box contains two vials, similar to the glucose, however, there are 25 test strips only per vial. So each one of these vials for ketone only has 25 strips. Can anyone remember how many are in the glucose? 50. Good job, excellent. Once opened, the test strips are stable at room temperature for up to three months or 90 days, which is something that you guys need to remember as well. Does anyone remember for the glucose how six, many days it is? Six, six months. One six months. Eighty days, excellent, good job. Or until the expiration date, whichever comes first. And then all of this is just repeated. Keep the vial tightly closed when not in use. Store the test strip in the original vial at room temperature. The manufacturer's expiration date is printed on the vial. And as always, write down the, uh, the opening date and discard date. Thank you, my dear. Now, three levels of quality so uh, solutions. I've realized, where's my pen? There is glucose and ketone written on the vial itself, which means the control solution that is used for glucose is as well used for ketones, okay? And uh, of course, as you, as you know, uh, there are reference ranges written on each vial, and uh, if you want to know whether the test has passed or failed in the quality control step, you can just look at the vial itself to understand. If, if it's within the range that's written on the vial that you just used for the control solution, that means it's passed. If not, then it's failed. And whether it's a pass or fail, you have to report it directly to the QC officer, of course. All right, there are three levels of quality control available. Store the controls at room temperature. Keep the vial tightly closed when not in use. The expiration date is written on the control vials. Uh, once open, the quality control is stable for up to 90 days. Can anyone tell me why it's only stable for 90 days? Can anyone guess? Well, because it is used for glucose and ketone. If the ketone lasts for less, that means the control solution is also going to last for, for, less, for less time. So, because the minimum is ketone. And again, always write the date open and discard date. Again, written in red, very important write the opening and discard date of the control solution files. Next. Uh, very basic stuff, although there's one thing that I need to mention that sometimes I see some nurses in Al Musa. I think I've only seen one nurse that uh, has not upholded this one particular thing. It's not that important, but I think it's going to be good for just the quality of life. All right, to begin the quality control testing and to turn, uh, and to turn the meter on, all you have to do is insert the strip 
into the glucometer. So you have a glucometer, it's off, and then you bring a strip, whether it's glucose or ketone, both of them work in the very same way, and then you insert it into the glucometer, and it will turn on. I think this one doesn't have more ketone. You don't have to uh, fumble with any settings or anything. It will recognize it immediately, whether it's a ketone strip or if it's a glucose strip. Uh, the meter will show a flashing droplet of blood indicating that it's turned on. This droplet of blood. Okay? And I want you to notice there's also a red circle over glucose. You're never going to find it where the strip that you inserted is going to be not corresponding to the name that's coming up in the corner. Okay? Please. Alright, now this is uh, the one thing that I wanted to mention that you guys, I've seen one nurse not using. I haven't, of course, met all of the nursing staff in al but I've seen one nurse not use it. The quality control testing can be stored in the device itself as a control or quality control test. Uh, you don't need to uh, record it as a patient test. All right. Uh, the way to do it is uh, you press the right or left arrow button to scroll through the QC level. So while you're holding the glucometer, you get the strip, insert it like so. And then you press right or left. If you look at the bottom, there's going to be C1, and then you scroll again. C2, and then you scroll again. C3. And then you insert the corresponding uh, control solution. And then the result is going to be stored in the glucometer itself as a quality control test. So let's say, for example, to give you a small scenario, in the morning, there is a lot of patients coming in. I need to do the quality control testing ASAP, as fast as possible. right? You open the glucometer, you do the testing, and then a patient comes in, and then you, you immediately have to take his test. And then the second patient, fourth patient, tenth patient. And then you want to return back to see what your quality control test was. And then it's lost between all the ten results. So we're going to need to scroll and start remembering which one is it. Or instead, what you can do is actually save it as a control solution test. And that's it. Just to make life easier. You're going to see it labeled as quality control one, this is quality control two, quality control number three. Okay? to do the quality control testing. Step one, gently shake the vial, all right? And then you place a drop of the quality control at the end of the strip, insert it. You're going to place a drop onto the tip of the glucometer, not at the top, at the tip, okay? Maintain fluid contact until the test strip is filled. So uh, until the test strip is filled, you're going to hear a noise, you're going to hear a beep. Beep. then you know that it's full. And then you can remove the, the droplet from of the control solution. And then of course, it's going to display either with, uh, within six seconds for glucose or 10 seconds with ketone. Okay. Uh, the quality control uh, results screen will display when the analysis is complete, six seconds or 10 seconds. The result will automatically be stored in the meter memory with the date and time identifiers. So even if you did forget the C1, C2, C3 buttons, you can always check the time. Whichever one is the first one by date is probably the one that uh, it was control solution testing. Uh, also, uh, record the results and verify it is within the acceptable range. Some of you will record it manually on a piece of paper so that you can report it to the QC officer. This is the perfect time to do it, uh, as soon as it's done on the glucometer itself, and then remove the test strip to turn the meter off. Important points. Always hold the glucometer in the horizontal position or slightly bent downwards. All right, so we want to take it in the crashing position, not in the taking off position. The control solution. We do something called the hanging drop technique. We squeeze it slightly, very lightly, until a droplet appears at the tip. And then we don't take the control solution like this, we take the control solution like this. Can anyone tell me why? Or can anyone guess why this is important? The velocity will go to the, the okay. sensor. Okay. Correct, correct. If I take the droplet like this, the drop might start running down the strip and then enter the port, and the glucometer is damaged. This is money in the floor, money in the trash bag. Okay? Always hold the meter in horizontal position or point it slightly downwards with the test strip when doping. All right? It is recommended to place the meter onto a flat table for QC testing if possible. Uh, proper orientation prevents control solution from running down the test strip into the meter. 
allowing the liquid thrown into the meter or test reports may damage the port. All right, patient testing is basically the same thing. To begin patient testing and to turn the meter on, insert the strip into the glucometer. Uh, once the strip is inserted, the meter will recognize whether it's a glucose or ketone. The meter will show a flashing droplet of blood, that one, to indicate that it's ready for the analysis. Next one. Um, this is something for general knowledge. This is something that I wanted to uh, bestow for the nursing department here. You guys use the one-touch delicate safety lancets, which already are pain-free lancets or uh, with the uh, least amount of pain because they're the thinnest in the market. Um, there are some techniques, I'm not even looking at here, it's not mentioned here. There are some techniques uh, that can help ease the pain even further for patients, especially patients who are afraid, okay? When we take the patient's hand, usually we do it on the non-dominant hand. This is why I have my left hand up, okay? Or if you want, this is to your left side. Okay. Anyway, we don't test on those two fingers, we test on those three fingers. Okay. And when we're doing the lancing, we don't place the lancet on top, we place the lancet to the side, so that it is less painful. Just to explain it even further, when you're holding a hot cup of tea, you're not holding it like this, you're holding the cup of tea with the tips of your finger, right? Because there's less nerve endings at the tips, therefore, even if we lance in the same place, it's going to be less painful for the patient. Here it says, the protocol for uh, lancing the patient. Uh, first, we need to clean the patient's finger according to the hospital's protocol, all right? And then we have to dry it thoroughly. Uh, I'm not sure whether in al Mossad the protocol is to wipe it with alcohol. If this is the case, if you're going to have to wipe the patient's finger with alcohol, you're going to need to wait maybe a few minutes to five minutes. Some, uh, uh, some guidelines even say 10 minutes. To, for, so, so that the alcohol evaporates, because the alcohol can actually affect, uh, with any glucometer, it can affect the readings, okay? Dry thoroughly. Perform a finger stick according to hospital protocols. It is recommended to wipe away the first droplet of blood and test from the second droplet of blood. Can anyone tell me why we're doing all of this? Why are we washing the patient's hands? Why do we have to consider the patient's uh, first drop of blood removed? Uh, why should we take from the second drop of blood? Does anyone have any idea? Infection, accurate results. Yeah. Accurate results, infection. All of these are correct answers. So first of all, yes, of course, there is a very, very high possibility that we might get infections. But second of all, we don't know where the patient's hands have been before we insert the lancet in them. Maybe he was eating chips in the lobby. The chips is carbohydrates. That means his finger is full of carbohydrates, which means it's going to be inserted in, within the drop of blood into the strip, and it's going to be much higher than the blood actually, yeah, the blood glucose actually gets. So this is why I have to wash the hands to remove any residue, whether it's food or uh, infections or you know germs in, uh, in general. Next, when the blood drop appears, touch the end of the strip to the blood drop. Do not apply the same. I don't think this is important. The results will appear within six seconds. Next. The patient's result screen will display when the analysis is complete. The results will automatically be stored in the memory with a date and time identifier. Record the results manually if needed and remove the test strip to turn the meter off. Next. Screen message. Okay. Remember when I told you about the ranges, the reportable ranges for glucose between minimum of 0 0.6, maximum of 33.3, if a patient, surprisingly, has a blood glucose level less than 0 0.6, or not very surprisingly has a blood glucose more than 33.3, the results are going to show as low, as in lower than 0 0.6, or high, higher than 33.3. Likewise with ketone. I can't remember the exact ranges for ketone. I think it was uh, 0 0.1 and 7.0, I think. Anything more than that is going to show as high, which is like, report to the doctor immediately. Doctor, this patient is dying. Take him to the ER, okay? And lower, of course, he's probably already um, uh, hospitalized or in the ICU, right? Um, now, when you're reviewing the results, reviewing, not viewing, reviewing the previous results across the day, I'm pretty sure you are you're all very well acquainted with how the glucometer works, but one thing that I want to mention, when you're viewing the results, you can see at the top left, 
if the result that you're looking at is a glucose or ketone test. Okay, just look at the top left. Let's read through it very quickly. The Satrap Express meter is capable of storing up to 400 test results. Results are stored automatically and deleted on a first in, first out basis. So, if I was the first patient to take the glucometer, uh, to take a test on a very brand new glucometer, and then I am the 400, and, uh, and then the 400 first patient comes, that means my every result is going to be deleted because it has reached capacity. First in, first out. Um, to view the previously stored results, uh, press the mode button for less than three seconds. If there are no results, there are going to be three dashes. If the results are, in, uh, if there are results in the memory, the most recent one will be displayed, and then you can scroll through them with the left and right buttons. The meter will display end if, of course, there's less than 400 tests and you've reached the end of the results. The results are stored by date and time identifier. As for the battery, sometimes, and this has happened uh, this year for the first time in uh, Masa Hospital, the battery almost ran out in one of the glucometers. At least from, from what I've seen, maybe it's happened before, but from what I've seen, it happened in uh, September. Uh, there was the battery icon appeared, and essentially oh, when that happens, it means the battery is low. Uh, the first time it shows up means that there is going to be 10 more tests remaining in, in the bank, in the battery bank. After that, it's going to be completely dead, and we're going to need to replace the, the battery, okay? Again, maintenance, or better yet, cleaning. Uh, I'm, I want to summarize this very quickly for you. There are going to be three tissues. Three pieces, pieces of cloth, three tissues, all right? The first one contains hydrochloric alcohol or sodium hypochlorite or whatever the hospital policy is when it comes to cleaning detergents. Clean the meter according to the hospital protocol. Use isopropyl alcohol or sodium hypochlorite solution sprayed on tissue or soft cloth or use special disinfecting wipes. For example, here, I have bought with me some alcohol wipes. For, I want to say the the... The A plus academics amongst you who really, really want to get to know and understand the Sastrip Express meter very, very well. Uh, there are different error codes. Sometimes, uh, by chance, something happens and then there's an error and the, the test strip is not fulfilled. There are different codes that correspond to the different errors. So, just to go through it very quickly, uh, the E3 code is for a used test strip. So for example, I'm a nurse. I took a, a, a patient's test on the strip, and then instead of throwing it in the trash can, I put it on the tray in front of me. And then the next mm -hmm. patient comes, I take uh, the same glucometer that already has a droplet of blood inside, and then I inserted it back into the glucometer. It's going to give me E3 code. What is this? It's a used test strip, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, E4 means short sample error, which means when we insert the Glucometer, the strip into the glucometer, and we put the droplet of blood, the droplet of blood does not fill the, the well that is on top. Okay? Does anyone remember the, the volume required of blood for glucose and ketone strips? Excellent, good job. 1.2 microliters for glucose and 0 0.6 microliters for ketone. You don't need to memorize this. As long as you can see that the vial itself is filled, it should be sufficient. And once you hear the audible beep, from the glucometer when the vial or the, the well on top is filled, you, sh you can just proceed, you can remove the glucometer from the patient's hand, okay? Uh, if it's not fulfilled, you're going to get E4 error, like the one in the picture here. E5 strip is strip not recognized, which means that sometimes, um, for example, I'm already a diabetic patient, uh, sorry, I'm already a diabetic nurse, maybe this happens, and I grab a glucometer, sorry, I grab a strip from a different company, like uh, LifeScan's own One Touch. This is uh, the One Touch Select. And I grab one of the strips and insert it into the glucometer. It looks green. It looks green. It is very similar to the ketone strip, same color.